Hey VC, it's me Roger back with another video. I was at the record store yesterday and I realized it had been a month since I made one of these show and tell videos. Where I just show recent vinyl finds and stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, a month is a long time. And so I've got quite a bit of stuff to show. Um, I'm only going to show new things in this video, I mean brand new, um, mostly vinyl, a couple CDs, um, but I'll show some antiques next time. I haven't been doing a lot of digging, but I've got some stuff to show. This is going to take long enough. Cheers everybody. First, in the background, we're listening to more Thirsty Year Blue Series. This is Guillermo E. Brown, uh, Soul at the Hands of the Machine. Came out in 2002. Um, yeah, maybe a little dated, but um, I like it, and they don't harass me about copyright. So first I'm going to show a couple CDs, um, don't buy a lot of CDs, but you know, some things it's the only way, including this, this is the Grateful Dead, Dave's Picks, Volume 10, recorded at Thelma, which is a little bar in Los Angeles on December 12th, 1969, uh, three CDs, HD CDs actually. Uh, limited edition of 14,000, which sounds like a lot, but these sell out. This is sold out already. Uh, I'm a subscriber, so I also got the bonus disc for the year, which is more from that same run, and has the Dark Star, which is the best part. Uh, yeah, I was a big deadhead. I saw them a hundred times in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, I'll always have a soft, spark, a soft spot in my heart for Jerry Garcia as a guitar player. But as that time recedes in the rearview mirror, I'm less inclined to actually listen to them. I don't know. Uh, next. This is a Portland metal band called Agaloc their new one called The Serpent and the Sphere. Some profound lore. Uh, the vinyl is supposed to be out this summer, but I'd be amazed with that label. Uh, this has a cool die cut cover. That's pretty cool. Nice booklet. Um, yeah. River called these guys tree metal. Kind of folky black metal. Uh, I think they're great. And this record has some really nice production. They're, some of their previous records suffer from that black metal crap production, which doesn't help. Um, yeah, the singing is, you know, whatever, it's metal. Uh, but the vibe and the music and the musicianship. Really top-notch stuff. I'm looking forward to the vinyl. Um, speaking of vinyl, uh, I guess I'll just dive right in. Um, I'm gonna start with these. These are reissues, but they're they're not. They're the first time they've appeared on vinyl. Uh, really great. Uh, this is the Red Crayola Coconut Hotel. It was supposed to come out in 1967, would have been their third album. Uh, this is the original lineup with uh, Steve Cunningham and Mayo Thompson and Rick Barthelme. Um But yeah, it was too weird even for international artists, uh, home of 13th floor elevators. Um, and you just look at the title, song titles, and you can see pretty much what you get, you know, it's uh, Water Pour, 
one second pieces, organ build up, vocal, free guitar, one minute in position, which I think means improvisation, uh, piano, guitar. Um, very, very, very experimental. Um, very much in a, in a John Cageian kind of sound world, uh, but naive and punk, kind of punk. Um, really great. Um, yeah, so this is supposed to come out in 1967, um, but didn't come out until 2009 when Drag City put it out on CD. And so this is its first appearance on vinyl. And I was a little nervous because it's a very quiet, uh, very quiet record for the most part. But this, the pressing is really nice, sounds great. Um, yeah, imagine if this had come out in 1967. Uh, the same day Drag City put that out, um, they also put this out on a 2LP set. This is Red Crayola Singles. The cover's pretty disturbing. Uh, yeah, 2LP and a gatefold. Uh, collects uh, Red Crayola, Mayo Thompson stuff from, you know, the breakup of that period through the 70s and 80s and 90s and thousands. So his work with Rough Trade in the UK and art and language and musically all over the place. Um, again, really nice pressing. Uh, fills in a lot of holes in the Red Crayola, Mayo Thompson discography. Those seven inches are, you know, the singles are hard to find. Um, really glad to have that. Uh, and speaking of Drag City, uh, this came out, uh, I think maybe last week. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know about it. I uh, just saw it at Grimey's, and um, you know, knew I had to have it. Uh, this is. Uh, let me take it out of the Blake sleeve because the, the packaging here rivals Southern Lord for its you know lavishness, and uh, and it figures because there's a Sun connection here. So uh, yeah, what we have here is uh, Oren M. Barchi. I'm not familiar with him. Stephen O'Malley from Sun uh, and Randall Dunn on synthesizers. Uh, yeah, really cool gatefold. Uh, so the title of the album is Shade Themes from Kairos. I think Kairos is a film. Um, yeah, I think I might even like this stuff better than Sun, musically speaking. This is great. Uh, kind of like that Ensemble Pearl collaboration with Boris. Um, mostly instrumental, uh, yeah, drone and heavy, yes, but also pretty and ambient at times. Uh, this is this is just great, great stuff. Highly recommend. It. Um, so again, speaking of Drag City, they've been doing great stuff now. Most of these aren't new, uh, but I finally saw this film, a band called Death, so I had to pick up the LP on Drag City for the whole world to see. So yeah, a lot of you know about this story, you know, these uh, three brothers from Detroit playing hard rock punk music in the mid-70s. Um, um, this is really, really good. Uh, came out in 2009. Uh, Drag City's been really good with them, uh, keeping stuff in print, and they've released two more records. This is Spiritual, Mental, Physical. Uh, this came out in 2011. Uh, so this is like demos and you know, outtakes and sort of, you know, hit or miss in a way. There's some good stuff on here. Um, but given the story, you know, here and all this stuff is fascinating. And then there's a third one, Death 3, which came out in just this year. Um, yeah, really cool. Really cool story. Uh, really good music. Uh, really psyched about that. Uh, apparently have, you can get all three of them in a slipcase directly from Track City if you're interested. I don't have room for that. Um, but yeah, so you know, you not only have not only three black guys in Detroit playing like punk, but calling yourselves death in you know the mid '70s was crazy.
career suicide. It's kind of a sad story. Um, but by the late 80s, yeah, you could call your band death and you could be part of a whole subgenre called death metal. Um, so yeah, this is a Florida band called death. Uh, their second record, I think, Leprosy, came out in 1988. This is a recent reissue on Relapse. Uh, you gotta love that cover. Uh, yeah, there's a box set with an extra disc of you know, demos and stuff, and a poster. And there's a colored vinyl version. This is plain old black vinyl, it's fine with me. Um, yeah, what can I say about that? Cheers. So, this is a reissue. Um, now, a lot of people have been showing the recent Record Store Day domestic reissue of July's self titled record from 1968. Actually, came out on major and minor records in Britain. Pretty obscure psych classic. Um, and, you know, I found that Record Store Day version. Was the tickiest, poppiest, skippiest, pressing nightmare ever, really. And it was on this, you know, ugly splatter vinyl, so you couldn't even see what, what the problem might have been. Um, yeah, whatever. I was talking to my friend at Grimey's, and she said, oh, well, you know, there was an um, import version of this that's a lot better. And they had a copy, and yeah, it was, you know, imports are pricey here in the States now, but I like that record so much that I, I went ahead and got it. And boy, this is fantastic. This is on uh, uh, Gerson Records in Germany. So yeah, 1968 psychedelic pop masterpiece, really. Mono, uh, really nice pressing on black vinyl, nice insert. This, you know, their story. Really, really well done. I'm really glad to have this. Uh, this is not so new, um, but I was browsing around their metal bins and saw this. This is Ancestors. Uh, what's it called? In Dreams and Time. Came out on TP in 2012. Someone in the VC showed this, I think. Um, Andrea Sonic Mainliner, maybe? I, I can't remember. Um, Anyway, it was there, it was cheap, um, I like the cover a lot, and uh, boy, this is good, prog metal, um, really ambitious, um, some really, you know, lengthy, epic songs, good playing, you know, nice singing, I want to check out their other stuff, and definitely a band to watch. Uh, speaking of metal, I found this at the same time, uh, another record store day thing. Still, still seeing those float around. Uh, this is Mastodon's Live at Brixton. Limited numbered, limited to 2000. Uh, look at that number though. Let's see if you can really see it. It's number 667 of 2000. Someone got 666. Now that would be cool, huh? Um, I've talked about Mastodon before. I love their studio albums live. They suck. And yeah, this sucks. Uh, there's, I haven't even played the vinyl. Look how many songs they cram on each side. It's 97 minutes on two LPs. I didn't even bother to play them. It was just DVD. I watched most of it. Uh, yeah, love these guys, but love their mess. Why did I buy it? Because I collect their records. Another record store day thing I found. Um, this is Jaco Pastorius, Modern American Music Period, the Criteria Sessions. Jaco Pastorius, of course, the great bass player, late great bass player. Um, these are his early demos from when he was living in Florida. And he's got some good musicians on here, I can't. Um, 
I think Jeff Glowing Double Oak Cabbage showed this record and talked about how the sound quality is not so good. It, it's not. It's, you know, they're demos and they're not even from tape. I think they're from acetates, you know, worn acetates. So, yeah, the sound isn't very good. It's on colored vinyl, which doesn't help. And, um, but there's a download with some extra tracks. Um, it's cool. I think it's limited. Uh, great music, you know. What an amazing bass player. Some of my favorite of Jaco Pastoris' work is with Joni Mitchell. You know, he's in Web Report and stuff, but check out those Joni Mitchell records that he plays. Uh, okay, wow. Uh, this just came out yesterday. This is, I guess the name of the band is Water, and the name of the album is This World. Temporary Residence. Beautiful cover. Um, so yeah, I picked this up because it's Zach Riles from Grails, which is a band I really like. I've shown some of their stuff before. Uh, Tyler Trotter, not familiar with him, um, and Brett Walford on drums. He was in Slint. So I was like, hell yeah. Uh, and this is beautiful. Uh, very much like Grails, um, you know, which I love. I guess spacey post-rock psychedelic. Uh, but this has like an Americana kind of feel at times, which is really nice. Um, mostly instrumental. There's one track with some uh, female vocals. Uh, Tony Levin plays bass on that track. Um, yeah, this is a uh, really, really nice record. Really. Um, so I was at the record store and this music was playing and I was like, wow, that is really beautiful. You know, what is that? And they're like, oh, it just came out. This is Tumani and Siddiqui. Uh, father and son uh, playing duets on the Kora. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, African music. So amazing. I mean, the, Talk about virtuosity. I mean, look at these instruments. You hear w what they're playing, it's like, wow, how, how? Um, yeah, just beautiful. It's on this uh, World Circuit label, which I think is out of the UK. So again, not, not cheap, uh, but really spectacular sonics to real audiophile experience. Um, yeah, beautiful. Uh, another beautiful uh, record I wasn't really expecting to see. This is Lawaji's Celestial Music, 1978 to 2011, which I think came out on CD recently, but this is first time on LP. Uh, it's three LPs, you know, on a single sleeve. Uh, all the inner sleeves have a long interview with them. Uh, this is great. This is, um, you know, I. There's this track on here with Bill Aswell, and I was like, oh, I have that CD. Um, I didn't even realize it was Laraji on that CD. I love that. Uh, this is great, sounds great, and this is not just New Age Pablum. This is some really interesting, uh, listenable, but challenging, spiritually, music. I, I'm not making any sense. Uh, it's on uh, another UK label. I think it's in the UK, um, All Saints. Uh, but for three LPs, really not that expensive. A sound really, really good. Nice pressings. I'd highly recommend this to anybody. Uh, whatever you might think of New Age. Okay, I was going to try to keep this under 20 minutes, but I still have a bunch more records to go. Uh, these are all pop records. I like pop music. Here we have the Black Keys new record, Turn Blue. Um, I'm not someone who goes way back with them. My nephew turned me on to that Brothers record, which I like. Haven't really dug anything else I've heard from them, um, you know, but I decided to pick this up. I like the cover, but the real reason why I picked this up I'm at the counter and I see that they have this bag of swag. So if 
you buy the owl and you get this bag of swag and um, how can I resist? You know, cool cover. I'll show you the swag in a second. Uh, the music is, uh, they're kind of going for a grander, more orchestral kind of psychedelic sound here. But the production is meh. Some good songs. I, I don't know. I, I'll hold on to it. Um, but I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. So yeah, you get the bag, and you get a poster. And this is what I really wanted. Get a turntable mat. Not that I would ever use this on my turntable, but, uh, you know, except to maybe put it on and watch it spin and hypnotize myself. And got a couple buttons. So, none such just splashed out for the new Black Keys record. Um, it's okay. Um, now some of you might be surprised that I, I like this guy. Uh, it's kind of mainstream, I guess, for me. Uh, Ray LaMontagne, Supernova. This is his new record on RCA. Now, produced by Dan Auerbach from Black Keys. And I can appreciate what he's going for here. Um, now, his early records, which are lovely, are just straightforward, kind of folky, singer-songwriting, naturalistic kind of production. Uh, really nice sounding, but... So he's going for a more orchestral, pop, psychedelic thing here, and I can appreciate that. And there's some really good songs on here, but the production... I don't know, maybe I'm being picky. Uh, Just because you're a rock star doesn't know how doesn't mean you know how to produce records. I'll just say that. This could have been great. You know, as could have this, maybe. A couple more. And this might surprise a few of you too, but if you've watched for a long time, maybe not. Yeah, it's Farrell Williams' new record, Girl or G I R L, whatever. On Columbia. Um, come on, that happy song is great. Uh, to me, it's kind of just what the world needs right now. I mean, we're about to spin totally out of control. So, you know. I was hoping this would be along the lines of the Daft Punk record last year, uh, and it's not. It's, um, but it's pretty good. There's some. Good tracks, good summertime music. What can I say? Finally, uh, this was just reissued yesterday. This is Mad Lib Shades of Blue. Mad Lib invades Blue Note. He was given access to Blue Note vaults. Um, and he did this hip hop, you know, reimagination of, of classic and obscure Blue Note stuff. Uh, this originally came out in 2003. I never owned it. Uh, 2003 was a dark time, as you might recall. And, you know, I liked this, but it was kind of everywhere. And then it disappeared. And um, this is on the new Blue Note 75 series, pressed here in United. Uh, they're doing a whole bunch of classic Blue Note things. I haven't picked any of those up, but decided to pick this up to check it out. Now, this is undoubtedly an all-digital thing to begin with, but uh, the pressing is pretty good. Paper sleeves, you know, scuffed up the surface, but uh, played really nice. Um, this is classic. Uh, really glad to have this. That's it. Wow, 24 minutes. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I'll be back with some pre-loved antique records next time. Till then.